and basically the leader of Philistine rejected him, so he had to go back to his uh, where he stayed with his. Uh, then, by the time he coming back after three days, the place that he and his wife and his soldier wife and all the thing that he had and they had was taken away by the Arab Amalek and the town was burned. Okay, here here's a few scripture, a few verses that we can see. Now it happened when David and his men came to Ziklag on the third day that the Amalek had invaded the south and Ziklag, attacked Ziklag and burned it with fire, and had taken captive the woman and those who were there, from small to great, and they did not kill anyone, but carried them away and went their way. So David and his men came to the city, and there it was burned with fire. And their wives, their sons, their daughters has been taken captive. Then David and his people who were with him lift up their voices and wept until they had no more power to weep. And David, his two wives, Ahinoam, and the Zesarai, and Abigail, the widow of Nebal, the Carmelite, has been taken captive. Now David was greatly distressed, for the people spoke of stoning him, because the soul of all people was grieved, every man, for his son and his daughter. Okay, I want to stop there. You see, this is this story. You know, I wish and I pray. All of us will never have to deal with this situation. Situation like this. Or something similar to this. In life. But you never know. You never know. Anything could happen. Why? Because the world we live is still under the activity of Satan. And the world we live was cursed because of sin of Adam and Eve. So natural disaster could happen, right? This is, this is the story of the battle. But it could be anything in our life could happen. Anything. But I want you to focus in the circumstance, not just the detail of the story, but the circumstance of when it's happened and how to deal with it. You know, job could be in a situation like this, right? When something happened to us, and then people turn against us. And family it could be situation like this. And the war. I think God bless this nation for so many years. At least few one hundred years, more than one hundred years. No war ever happened on the land. But from now and then there is some situation. But what happened? 
if we have to deal with the situation just like this, lost everything. United earthquake can cause people lost everything. Tornado, you can take a look at tornado. I mean, I'm just standing there a moment ago, and then the tornado come and then gone. All the all the material thing they have gone. Sometimes the children's gone, husband gone, and wife gone, and the whole family gone, or maybe it's one single person left from the whole family. I wish and pray that we never have to deal with this kind of thing in our own life. But we have to always prepare, prepare for the worst. We cannot prepare our own way. We cannot prepare based on our knowledge of things around us. We cannot prepare well by the life we live, we have so much experience, and we cannot prepare well with our knowledge, our intellectual, with everything we can acquire on this, this, this life. Here David, he took his army to go with Philistine. Now the Philistine reject him and then he's coming back to Ziklag. That's where the city, the house, the family and wife and children and daughter and whatever livestock they have. Right there. And now the Amalek come and take it away and burn the city. And so what happened here? You can see what happened. What happened? All the men that under him, he lived there. He tell them what to do. Now, crying, weeping, and then to the point that they have no strength to whip anymore. And then they turn against him. They want to stone him. So you know, things like that could happen in life, in our life. You know, thing. Thing could happen, and then our loved one that close to us turn against us. Okay, what what did it do here? Verse five, you see very clear, and David lost everything. Two wives. Okay, some people may read here. Okay, David have two wives. And the Bible says, he is the man after God's own heart. So, they can justify. No, this is, is very clear in the, in the Old Testament. The Bible said, even Jesus repeated. Because of the wicked, the heart of man, God allows certain things. But for, for the goodness of the family, just one husband and one wife. That's what God created. If he intend to have Adam have more than one, he created more than one woman. Because he's only a rib. He take it out and make a woman. He can take two of them, three of them, and make it. And they can grow back. So we cannot read the scripture and take out context and then justify for what we do. But here we come back to this story. David was greatly distressed for the people spoke of stoning him. They turn around him and they say, why, why do, you, do you take us to the Philistine? And then they're rejecting us. Now we have nothing left. They could come and argue. They get so mad. No wife, no daughter, no son, nothing, no house. It's got burned already. You know, we, we, we always pray that we don't have to deal with this kind of thing in life. Right? Amen. Yeah, we pray for the, for the peaceful. Yahweh Shalom. God of peace and well-being. 
He's taking care of us. But this is the real thing in life. Do you know, 911 is happening to the people. Do they know what happened in one second before that? No. They know. But it's happened. So we need to prepare. We need to prepare. People losing their job. People losing their health. People losing their family member. That could happen. You know, I don't want to make you guys, you all, depressed about this story. But there is a hope in here. I want everyone to focus on. You know, on the beginning of this year, I had to do five funerals to do it and visit an uh, additional three more funerals. I have to take care of five and then visit three. That means eight. People deal with pain. People deal with loss all the time. But here, this story, they lost basically everything. Their hope of the future lost, because their children is the hope of the future lost. What else do they have? They don't want to live anymore. And David is a leader. Took them to the Philistines. And now he, he got in trouble. He got in trouble. So here the Bible tells us very clear. They ready to stoning him. Because the soul of all people was grieved. Put yourself in the situation just like this soldier. Listen to David. Follow him every step of the way. Now lost everything. You're going to get mad at him, right? You want to kill him. So that's what they do. They want to kill him. Stoning him, that's what they kill him. So what David can do? He has no help there. No one can comfort him at this time. Every single one, every soldier, lost everything. They want to stone him. They want to kill him. They want to destroy him. Because he lead them in the wrong way. Here, this is what we need to learn. Every man, they grieve because every man for his son, for his daughter. But David, what David could do in this situation? There's no wife there to comfort and encourage him. There's no real friend there anymore because every single one wants to stone him. He cannot ask any advisor, no counselor, no priest there to comfort him or give him guidance. So what does the Bible say? But David strengthened himself in the Lord, his God. So there is no one there, no human being. You know, there is a situation in life you have to deal with. No one there can help you. No one there can help you. No one there can guide you. No one there can give you a comfort or the word of wisdom. So you can do this and this and this. No. Basically, this situation is hopeless for David. If we look at our human eyes, that's what it is. Hopeless situation. For him and for all the soldiers that follow him. But here he is a leader. What should he do? He cannot depend on anyone anymore. So sometimes in our life, there is a situation that Men cannot help us. Men cannot help us. Only God. So here, David too. He strengthened himself in the Lord. 
no power for him to depend anymore. So only one power he knows that he can depend on is God. He's strengthening himself in the Lord. So that's why, remember in the Psalm chapter 42, there is one verse I want to read it again. I didn't read it at the beginning, but I want to read it. Verse 11, chapter 42, verse 11. Why are you cast down, O my soul? This is the situation, your soul, that means your mind, your intellectual, your emotion is basically desperate, cast down, want to go to, want to be gone. That's what it is. So, this is, this is not David saying, but this is one of the scriptures to tell us the situation that desperate our soul, desperate. And then we have to speak to our soul. Why are you cast down, O my soul? This is your body. Sometimes you have to speak to your soul. Wake up soul. There is hope in God. Wake up emotion. There is hope in God. Don't fear. There is no hopeless. Even with man. With man, with your own eyes, hopeless. But there is no hopeless in God. So you speak to your soul. What do they speak here? And why are you disquieted within me? Ready to die. Hope in God. There is hope in God. So that's why David, the Bible says, he strengthened himself in the law. When you have no one to depend on, you have no advisor, nothing. No one can help you. Only hope is in God. Amen. So that's why, how David can do that? I want to read you another verse. Psalm 103. Again, this is David speak to his soul. 42 is just the priest speak to his soul because they deal with the situation. That the soul want to give up. That means your mind want to give up. Your emotion want to give up. Your understanding that in your intellectual. Don't see there is a way out but only God always has a way out for everyone. Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul. All that is within, within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not his benefit. Why David had to speak like this to his soul? Because he faced the situation, he cannot open his mouth to bless God. So now he's here to speak to his soul, his emotion, his will, his intellectual. So, speak to God. Don't forget that he loves you. The benefit that he gives to your life up to this point. Don't forget that. So that's why... That's why David speak to his soul. You know, sometimes people talk down on you. Your, feel, your soul feels so down, so desperate, so hopeless. You want to disappear from the earth. But remember, David or Korea in uh, chapter 45, 42, deal with the situation. They have to speak, wake up their soul, and speak to their soul, and remind to their soul that God's goodness. 
That's what he say here. Remember, forget not his all his benefits. That's his goodness. We need to do that. But here, the question is, can we do this like David? And another question is, how David can stand this situation and say what he said? You know, we have to develop a relationship with God to the point, just like David, in order for us to deal with the situation in life. Desperate. Desperate. Yeah, we can, we can see, we can see very clearly in Samuel chapter 17, verse 34 to 37. This is the situation when David deal with the, the giant, Goliath. And everyone feared. He's still a teenager boy, remember? He's still a teenager boy. David said to Saul, the king, Your servant used to keep his father's sheep. And when the lion or the bear come, came, and took the lamb out of the flock. I went out after it and stripped it and delivered the lamb from his mouth. For when he rose against me, I cut it by his beard and stripped it and killed it. Your servant has killed both lion and bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them. You see David, you know, the teenager guy, he killed lion, he killed bear. How can he do that? Only God's strength. He have a relationship with God to the point that he said, this is my testimony. I deal with the lion, I deal with the bear, the way like this. And I can deal with the uncircumcised Philistine, Goliath, the same way. And then later on in this chapter, you say, David said, you come to me with the sword, but I come to you in the name of the Lord. So David developed develop the relationship with God. So that's what we all need to do. Every single day, take your time out. Talk to God. Read the scripture. And then God allow you to test. Test it. Whatever you read, you believe, you can test it. And God will prove himself is true to his promise. If you don't give out the relationship with God, when situations just like David come, what do you do? You do the same thing like all the soldiers. Crying and crying, crying to the point that crying doesn't change situation, right? Cry doesn't change. Cry doesn't make the son and the daughter come home. Cry doesn't change, doesn't make the house already burn. It's going to start to rebuild itself. No. But here, David strengthened himself in the Lord. And he speak to his soul. Wake up. Don't forget. God give you the power to kill the lion. To kill the bear. And he saved you from them. 
Remember, he can save you from all this Amalek. Mm -hmm. So that's the hope. That's what I want you to focus. Every situation in your life, remember, there's always hope. As long as you breathe, you have your breath on your body. There is hope because there is a God of hope. So never give up. Never, never, ever give up. The only time you can give up is when you don't have God with you. Or you just do it on your own. Amen. And then it becomes so desperate. And then you you want to disappear or not. But when you have God, even this situation, everything gone. Good. Remember another story in the Bible, Job? Everything gone. His wife reject him, all his children die, all the livestock gone. All the children die. But he said, he still depend on God. Okay, here we're going to see what David do. He strengthened himself in the law. Then David said to Abiathar, the priest, Amihelech's son, please bring the ephod here to me. And Abiathar brought the ephod to David. So David inquired the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue, for you shall surely overtake them, and with thou fail, recover all. See, he depends on God. Even there is a priest here. But remember, the priest cannot intervene and comfort him. So the Bible says he had to strengthen himself. Even the priest probably looked as bleak as all the soldiers. So David had to strengthen himself. Obviously, the priest doesn't give him a comfort, the strength, or the advice. And the priest doesn't even, didn't even ask him, why don't you take this ephod and ask the Lord? No, the priest didn't give him. Volunteer, but he asked the priest, brought that ephod to him so he can inquire the Lord. And the Lord came in. So, in the situation, do you have no hope, no future? Remember, God had the answer. God had the answer. So, I want to encourage you every single day. Take your time, build up your relationship with God by praying, talk to Him, and open the book, read, and even listen to the voice. Now they have it on your phone. You can hear it. You can hear it. You can hear, you can read, because the Bible says, bless for those who read and who hear the word. And then, just like David, how he can say this in this situation? Because he had a relationship with God. Remember, he had a relationship with God to the point that even his musical instrument, when he played, the demon, the evil spirit flee. So God wants us to have a relationship with him. You know, People may ask, may ask me, are you sure God wants to have a relationship with us? Yes. If you don't believe it, read the first few chapters of Genesis. God come and visit Adam and Eve. That's when he wants a relationship with us. You know, when, we, when you take time to talk to God, remember, not only talk to him, but take time to be quiet and let your soul still and then listen to God who speak to you. 
God speak to us in many ways. God speak to us through scripture. God speak to us through dream. God speak to us through the voice. Here in this case, God speak to him. He didn't say the voice. He didn't say anything. But I think God speak to him through the voice because he talked. And then, depend on, don't look at the situation, but look up to God. Remember in the book of Psalm, chapter 121, I look, I look to the hill where my help comes from. Where my help comes from. I will lift up my eyes to the hill from whence come my help. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. When you are in the situation like this, the only place can get help is God. Treat I recommend you treat every situation like this situation. That means you always need help. Even you're looking for the key, treat it as a very desperate case. Don't think this is a small thing. No. And then you look up to God. And look up to the hill. That's mean to God. And then we see what happened to David. Verse 8, he inquired the law, and you read, you read verse 18. So David recovered all that the Amalekite had carried away, and David rescued his two wives. Recover all. God, speak to you. You will catch them, you will get everything back. So, I encourage you, everything in life, there is hope in God, but we need to develop a relationship to the point when the situation, there is no one around to encourage us. We can encourage ourselves in God. And inquire him. Another thing we have to encourage that there is hope in God, and then need to take time to ask God, Lord, what? How do you solve this situation? And God will give you the guide. He told David, "You will, you will go pursue them. You will overtake them, and you will recover everything." Verse eighteen says, "That's it." David follow whatever God instruction. Not only strengthen yourself in God, but get the instruction how to solve the problem. I remember when I first came to this country, 1975, and I take one year for English class and then apply for graduate school. I don't have transcript. No transcript and no relationship between Vietnam and U.S. I can write a mail and request, send a transcript. No, nothing. And I apply for it. You know, there is no hope. How can you get in graduate school? <laughs> no, you get in junior college. Maybe there is a hope there. But you get in University of California. Only God. I just, at that time, already start to serve God when I'm back in Vietnam, when I'm 18, 19. Going around during the year, share the good news and baptize people and then continue calls. And then when I come here, you know, everything you give to God, your time, your strength, 
you will find names, everything. God will never forget you. He repays you more than. And then he guide me what to do. And then he put a person to do me favor. No transcript. I only have two transcripts of uh, two classes that I take from college. And no transcript from bachelor from level. All I do is they ask me. Try to remember what you learned. Put it down and go to the notary, notary public and sign your signature there and submit to graduate school. And I take my English test. I miss 5.0, 75 point to, to, uh, to qualify for graduate level English. You know, everything is hopeless. No transcript. Study English for one year, still fail on a graduate level. But when God answers you, when God opens the door, no one can shut. And I got accepted in a special admission. That special admission only allowed for a very genius, smart student in high school. They haven't finished high school, but they already take college. And then they can apply directly for graduate school. And then they will get special admission. I have nothing to qualify. See, that's a hopeless situation. But when you depend on God, when you serve in Him, He remembers your time. You give your life, you give your heart, and you give your whatever you have. So I encourage you, even the story beginning is hopeless, but at the end, you can see a person depend on God always have hope and a solution for everything. Let all stand.